broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. This is Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Hey, good morning. Like welcome a last to last minute work. Right welcome here, to Broadscast. Saying. I know we're up to the wire here. Happy fiftieth. Happy fiftieth. Oh my gosh. That's pretty nuts. We're turning fifty. Well, we're not turning fifty not turning technically. 50, yeah. Nobody's turning fifty. Just, just the show is celebrating. Uh, 50 hug episodes. your mic, like Kyle oh, sorry, said. Hug my mic. Hug your mic, because we're not close enough to our mics sometimes. Um, this one's for you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised when uh, you reminded me that it's been 50 episodes that we've... 50 episodes of Broadscast. Of course, that's 50 episodes in the last four years. <laughs> oh, shh, don't tell that part. Well, we used yeah. to do you know, a podcast, and we we're on a different network, and then we took a break, and then we got over here to KHTS AM 1220, and yeah. our podcast was reborn. Yeah, and I think we're, we're born again podcasters. I think we've learned a lot. I think the uh, no wine clause has helped a little uh, in some instances. <laughs> I do miss those shows. If you guys want to go back and listen to a few shows, <laughs> you'll know which ones we're at night. <laughs> um, and I like that we've added the uh, no Kardashian clause. Um, yes. That seems to be a trending thing now, P.S., in yes. the real world. We, we're trailblazers. Yeah, we are. We're breaking the internet. I notice when I hug the mic, it also makes me sit up straight. Sit, um, no, I think it makes me sit slouch. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it's not my fault. Yeah, I, I feel like I just like I want to touch the <laughs> mic with my nose. It's very awkward. So but what? Anyway. What? You know, no, not to put you on the spot or anything, but uh, you know, 50, 50 episodes. Who name? Three, your top three guests, or name one, name some shows that you've liked. Um, my gosh, I, I because it's it speaks to my heart. I've always loved the shows that we do about advocacy mm-hmm. um, and people that have overcome uh, horrific situations. One stands out to me, Patricia Wenskunis, yes, um, who survived a really traumatic uh, life. I mean, she was uh, attacked. attacked and kidnapped brutally, and, um, and she's a powerhouse and I love her. Um, I love the funny shows. Tammy Pescatelli is always mm-hmm. good to have around. Wendy mm-hmm. Miller. Oh yeah. When from she, Playboy TV. From Playboy TV. When you she guys came. can find all these on iTunes and um, broadcast.com as well. Yeah. We've, we've been really lucky. I mean, some people have really come through for us on a personal level and professional level to help support our show. And I, mm-hmm. I love that we just had some free spirited conversations. Absolutely. And I like you? the ones with uh, Dr. Suzanne. Oh, right. You know, those are a little crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um, She's due. And just like, you know, when we meet new people and hear new stories of broads and, you know, whether that means somebody, like you said, who's become an advocate out of such a terrible experience or, you know, somebody who just doesn't really care what other people think, like who stands up and speaks her mind, but right. is also nurturing and kind and... I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm happy. So happy 50th, Kim. Happy 50th. So let's move Jackie. on. Let's right. move on. Let's Speaking of advocacy, yeah. um, today we have some women who are, uh, some broads, who are using their own experiences to be advocates um, in the healthcare field. So I, I'm really excited to talk to Marie Walker-Riddle and Shelly Ross. Ross. Yeah, Shelly um, Ross is an old friend of mine, so I'm happy that she's taking time out of her life in Denver today. Yeah, a little Thank bit later you. in the show. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about some broad topics. You have a very um, like sexy voice today. Do it's I? Do I? Hot. Yeah. I was actually um, yelling last weekend, and my voice hasn't come back. Oh. Um, not in a bad way. I was just having a good time at a pool I party. I feel very music- somber. I don't want to be somber, but um, I, uh, for people that do or don't know, I, I run a nonprofit organization that provides counseling to teenagers. And this week I welcomed my new staff in and we've been training mm-hmm. this whole week and it's been really heavy. Oh, so yeah. I'm kind of like, I'm in that, I'm in that zone. Space. So I apologize, uh, not for my work, but I just, I'm a little like zend out a little. Right. Good. And I'm kind of the opposite because this week I started my new job at Fab Life over there with uh, Tyra Banks and Chrissy Teigen and your, I'm your, your crotch is dinging. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure what's happening. Um, I told you it was hot, your voice though. So. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter's not Tyra having any and of Chrissy this. Teigen and um, Joe Z. And it, so it's a, it's a fashion lifestyle beauty DIY show. Sounds fabulous. That I'm doing. Ha ha ha. I'm doing um, the marketing for that. So I'm kind of in more of a, I got to get my life in gear. I got to, you know, get more beautiful, more fabulous. So anyway, that's our week. So let's talk about some uh, broad topics. Josh, what is it? Is it Duggar? I thought it was Dugar, but I heard Duggar yesterday, which it doesn't really matter what you call him, but he's a cheetah. Yeah. He's a (laughs) cheater and 
he's gross. He he. Um, <laughs> to give it some context, the Ashley <laughs> Madison cheating website um, was hacked a few weeks back, mm-hmm. and uh, the names are being released as the hackers had promised. Right. And he is one of them. One he's being outed as one of the thirty-two million people who used the cheating website, Ashley right. Madison. I, would, I, I wish I would have written it down. Somebody, I, it was Jimmy Kimmel the other night, said how many uh, men are in the United States. Um, and it was like some, like 60 million or 80 million, I forget what it was. And he's like, and then 32 million of those people are There aren't 60 million men in 92, the United States. 92, I think he said 92 million. Aren't there billions of people in the U.S.? There are billions. There's like 5 billion. I don't know. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, don't, he, I thought he said 92 million and I, it struck mm. me odd, but... Um, well, then, yeah, yeah I, I think he's wrong. So anyway, um, you know, so he's he's got a quote, I've been the biggest hypocrite ever. I mean, it doesn't really matter what he says. Yeah. Um, here's my thing. Good. We're flawed. We're all flawed people. I don't... I'm not on Ashley Madison. I really hope my husband's not. But it's not that people are flawed. It's that they live this life of being so good. I follow this and this is what I do and you should be like me. Right. I will never tell you you should be like me unless you want to be a flawed, sometimes impatient um, spaz. Right. Well, and now- <laughs> And then join my church. And now what's happening too is his uh, his wife is kind of coming under some criticism because she's opting not to leave him and she's standing by her man and, and uh, you know, so there are people that are criticizing her for her decision and I'm thinking- not in my business, but then who cares? And good for you. And then why wouldn't you leave? And but you know, but it's really hard not, not to get wrapped up in that. But at the same time, too, like let's just say I were in the public eye, and that were my husband, or you know, and that happened. We 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 have a lot to work out. I'm not going to just go to the media and be like, I've left him. Right. You know, like there are well, then you children, have... aren't there? You know, and and. Right. Yeah. But then you have um, the other dude, Jared uh, from oh, Subway. Hey, fresh. Uh, who is pleading guilty to, um, you know, and I'm, I'm annoyed at the media for talking about him having sex with underage children. That's rape. P.S. Yeah. Um, but he's pleaded guilty and he will be taking some time spent in a lockdown facility somewhere, uh, serving time, but his wife filed divorce immediately. Yeah. But I think she's probably known. I mean, I don't know if Josh's is just finding out or whatever, but I think, yeah, she, you know, the Jared thing's been happening for a bit. That too much. I mean, it's been, it's all pretty recent. I mean, I'm certainly not that I love, you know, what is happening to any of the victims and their families and stuff, but I love the the swiftness and the fact that he's pleading guilty. Um, I'm a little disgusted that his old executive director of his foundation was the one that helped him with the child porn and hooking him up. It's disgusting. Um, Yeah. But he, he, he has a deal. Um, deal, yeah. yeah, a plea deal because yeah. he's going to spend what, like five years or something, five to eight years because uh, I mean, he could be in for the rest of his life, but they didn't want to do that to all those victims. And so, you and know, he's paying restitution to the tune of one point something million. So yeah. each of his victims will receive about a hundred thousand dollars in victim compensation, which it's not a lot. No, it is not a lot, but that's also things. unusual in our system. So I'm glad that's happening. And he has the money to pay. Well, yeah, it, so it those seems like he won't be fighting forever to get that money. Yeah, he's not fighting um, any of this. But yeah. it just, you know, oh, it's funny because of his role and who he is that he's already become the butt of jokes, you know. And I find myself even, I mean, t- removing the 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 heavy heaviness of the of the situation, like. Yeah. Part of me is kind of like, oh, is Subway looking for somebody? Because like, I'll do what he did for you. <laughs> I mean, that guy's paying over a million dollars and be, he's got a lot more. Right. Like for losing weight with Subway. Yeah. Hey, when, was we're all, like, when we're all looking around the, and, and we think that we can't make money. Don't and that- start me on Subway. You know my issue with Subway. They won't give me my sandwich the way that I, that I ask for it. Every time I walk in, then we have a full on battle. So Wait, they won't you- be choosing me as their Wait, but what? But it's awesome because they won't give you your sandwich without... They won't give it to me without toasting my bread. Right. I, it's the stupidest thing ever. I don't want my bread toasted. <laughs> I and they, love this. And there's a whole community online of people that want their sandwich the exact way that I've asked for it. And they told me they would not give it to me. Do you think it's because the bread is stale? I don't. Subway, we need to hear from you. I don't. I, I seriously. Why I, can't Kim have her sandwich without her bread I know. toasted? And it's chewy when they the toast it. The struggle is real. It's just, these are third world, third world problems right here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, Struggle? first world problems. First, all right. Yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give myself some credit. But um, coming up in the show, 
like we said before, we have Murray Walker Riddle and uh, Shelly Ross to talk about advocacy. And I just wanted to bring up a little bit of Shannon Doherty. You had brought oh. this story to my attention. Um, yeah, short, uh, Shannon Doherty was in the news yesterday, the day before. She's It's come out that she has breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And it came out because she filed some uh, a lawsuit against her previous business managers that they were not diligent in paying her insurance bills or legal or her and her insurance lapsed, right, and so therefore right. she wasn't able to go to the doctor or couldn't get it detected early enough. And so I, I have some thoughts about that. Yeah. I, I, I just personally, I mean, have someone who is not a very good advocate for my own health and well-being, um, I certainly don't think that it's somebody else's fault. I mean, maybe she I, – I, the story's a little convoluted, to be honest with mm. you, about where the blame is being placed. And if she knew she had cancer and therefore without having insurance, she couldn't get the proper medication and treatment or because she – didn't get to go to the doctors. They didn't know about it. But then I'm also thinking lots of people that don't have insurance go to the doctor and get right. checkups. And there's lots of opportunity to get your own health care without well, having it says, insurance. It says it was undiscovered. So her uh, management company, she's suing them for breach of contract and negligence, claiming it caused her to lose her Screen Actors Guild medical insurance for all of 2014 uh, because it failed to pay in November 2013 bill um, – when the undiscovered cancer was quietly spreading right. because it failed to pay a no- November 2013 bill for the year's premium. So the policy got canceled, leaving her without coverage until the next enrollment period for 2015. Right. But so once the coverage was reinstated, she went to a doctor and discovered that she has invasive breast cancer. Right. Um, but at some point, did, did she not know she didn't have insurance or at some, I mean, that's where I'm a little confused. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, we have, to I know when I have and- insurance or I don't. We have to take a break and we're going to come back in just a minute um, okay. and we'll talk more about it and other women advocates. Why should you become a broadcast sponsor? Broad multimedia exposure, including radio, web, iTunes, YouTube, and social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A quick, easy way to reach your target demo, women, exclusive, limited time only, affordable introductory rates. Plus 20 years experience in on-air and online marketing. We produce your one-of-a-kind creative in-house, saving you time and money. For more on becoming a Broadcast sponsor, visit Broadcast.com today. You're listening to Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Two broads with faces made for radio. Welcome back to Broadcast. Hi. How are you doing? I'm glad I stayed. Segment, I mean, uh, show show number 50. (laughs) So on on the phone with us today, uh, we have Marie Walker-Riddle. Marie is a social media influencer and fabulous. And I met her years ago when I was working on a, a talk show and she was um, part of that. And so Marie, are you on the phone? I am. Hi, how Morning. are you? Good. How are you ladies? Good. So I have always followed, you know, since I think it was 2011, your um, amazing voice on social media, whether it was Twitter or Facebook. And then one day things really changed um, when you announced that you had uh, cancer. And so, you know, did you know for a while before you brought that to your social media friends or how did, how did you decide to go out there with that? Well, you know, it's interesting because I just listened to your piece about Shannon Daugherty and um, I have to just preface this by saying that I have no history of cancer in my family at all Mm -hmm. and I'm considered environmental Okay. meaning um, my cancer has mutated twice. I had no prior conditions, mm-hmm. um, meaning I ha- always had, I have, I have nice, I have a nice rack, right? <laughs> so I always had bumps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't fit the common protocol. Okay. And I think that's a lot of why I'm spreading the news. So I was blindsided uh, on, in March 2014 when I went to the gynecologist and they said, how long have you had this? And then they found uh, some lymph nodes too. And I'm like, geez, I mean, I'm in IT. I carry a backpack with my um, laptop and I have a very old laptop. So I carried on that side, the right side. So I never thought of any, you know, anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically it, it, it hit me. Wow. It really, really hit me. I, and I can only imagine. And, and so for all these people, and you have such a broad reach where you like, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to let everybody know. I mean, what 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 was that like? What was your re- reaction? Oh, you know, 
besides shock. Yeah, um, of course. And uh, then being told, um, you know, I have a very aggressive cancer. Mm-hmm. I was, I had the worst case. I was uh, stage four, um, and it had spread supposedly mm-hmm. to my lymph, besides my lymph nodes, to my hilar, or hilar area. And basically, the type of cancer I have can spread quickly to the brain. Right. And it's very, very scary. And uh, for someone like me, who is um, really left brain, I was just devastated. Um, so I cried, and I regrouped. Um, quite honestly, my family didn't want me to tell anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because we're kind of old school. Right, Well, right. I'm not, but they are. Right. And uh, my husband's like, no, you don't want to tell anybody. Just let's let's we don't want to talk, talk about this. And I said, at a certain point, I thought, geez, you know, if I can't help anybody else out there, what good am I? And I've always been a social connector, if you right, will. Right, right, absolutely. And um, not only did I find out I had triple negative, not only did I find out then that I, could never, I couldn't be operated on because I would have been killed, if you, or dead, I should say, died, mm-hmm. on the operating table possibly because of the inflammatory breast cancer that I was diagnosed with. Wow. Yeah, I mean, all kinds of things happened. Um, and then I just, you know, I just figured I have to give back. And I, the type of cancer I have being environmental means that a lot of young women are getting affected. And in fact, I'm in an inflammatory breast cancer group. 29-year-old, 30-year-old moms are dying from what I have. Wow. Um, and they're leaving behind three- and four-year-old kids. So when you ask me, why, you know, what was I thinking, well, if I can save one person, I would be happy. And you know, that's, I don't have to save millions. I don't have to save a thousand. I just need to help one person. So, Marie, um, I, I am someone who um, believes that I need to sit in my poop for a little while before uh-huh. I can get out of it and, and help others and advocate. So how long, how long were you kind of isolated and, and introverted before you realized that you wanted to make a difference and advocate for others? I think uh, right away. Um, uh, it didn't take me long to, to admit. I think I posted something like, uh, God must really think, um, Jackie would probably know, God mm-hmm. must really think I'm special because, you know, and it's got a symbol, and, and I don't swear, but it says something like, I, I'm a truly, oh, a, I must be a badass. Oh, okay. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, I don't swear. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just AM radio, so. <laughs> got it. I do, so Jackie's reminder. always correcting me. <laughs> Thank you for the ri- reminder. So that was about, I think, maybe about December time frame. I still had my hair, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so quite honestly, Kim, I'm, I'm kind of an open book. I have nothing to hide. Um, if, like I said, if I could just help one person, that's great, you know? And I have an audience. I have a wonderful audience. People know me. I've been on social media probably since 2005. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was on the Ricky Lake show. I, you know, I, I've had a lot of things happen in my life. You know, my dad has Parkinson's. My mom has Alzheimer's dementia. Um, I've had suicides in my family. I've had it, you know, all kinds of stuff go on. But I'm a strong, tough broadcast chick, you know? <laughs> and I think that's the thing. Um, you know, when you're hit in the gut being told you have three to five years to live, possibly, and you have young children, and you have a business, and you're someone like me, I need to step up. If I don't step up to give people hope, then, and I just shrink, Forget yeah, it. Right. And you, you've always, you have such an amazing attitude. I mean, you're constantly out there. You're, you're very vocal about what's happening, right. what the realities are. I right. think you, you really have stripped the taboo of being sick. You've really changed the face of somebody who's, you know, quote unquote sick, you know? Right. And so yeah. you've, yeah, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're a ball buster and you're, you know, and, and I love it. And, but you're also such a light for other people. And I, I think that, you know, what you are doing is so important. So what, what is your message to other, um, is Peter telling us we have to go to break? No. Oh, okay. But real quick before we go to break, yeah. um, what is that one message? Like if, if, if somebody could take one message from this. Okay. So here's the important thing. You need to think outside the box, not fear cancer. What I've learned is, you know, I'm an IT. I've been in, in you know, own, own my own company. I, I know my stuff. Mm-hmm. And once I stop fearing cancer and learning that cancer is a science and that it's in every one of us, 
It's just a matter on how you have to control it. And if I have the most rare aggressive cancer and I'm controlling it just by going healthy and doing what I need to do, I mean, I, I, I sent you something about holistic doctors. I'm working with a guy who's been in IT, who's affiliated with a holistic doctor. Mm -hmm. And the beauty about my cancer is when you Google inflammatory breast cancer, it's only about 17% of all breast cancers are this cancer, right? So I'm in a small few. Um, and because my cancer mutated twice, I am a statistic all in itself. So I have nothing to lose and everything to gain to mm -hmm. try things, right? right? It's amazing. Yeah. We're, so well, we want to talk more to you, but we so, do have to run no to a break real quick. Okay. Um, we will be back with Marie Walker-Riddle. Okay, thank you. When Broadscast was looking to relaunch our website, we knew exactly who to call, the team at Stark Social Media. At Stark Social, they understand the importance of a strong online presence. From marketing and branding, web design, and social media, the in-house team listens to their clients' needs and budget and responds with a tailor-made plan for your small business, nonprofit, or startup. Stark Social's philosophy is simple. Do good work. And they live by that philosophy every day. Stand out from the competition and contact Stark Social Media today at starksocial.com. Listening to Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. They're huge in anywhere other than somewhere that you've been before. Well, welcome back. Um, if you're just joining us, we have Marie Walker Riddle on. Oh, we have uh, Marie Walker Riddle on today's show. I think is she, is she still there? I am. Oh, hi. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. We had like a weird blip. Yes. Um, on our side. So apologize for that. Oh, it's um, like a, we're someone's it's like call, call waiting. I mean, call waiting. Yeah. Um, might be our other guest. It is. Um, anyway, so Marie, um, yes. you've been very, also very vocal with taking your healthcare into your own hands where you are um, changing things up, working with this holistic doctor. Yeah. You were on steroids for a long, long time. Uh-huh. And now you've, um, I mean, and they've actually had a, a huge effect. You're, you've recently come off them. Um, right. They've had a huge effect on your memory and your quality of life I've seen. And right. so tell us a little bit about, you know, what was going on with some of your treatments and why and how you were able to adjust them, even though it's not necessarily what the doctors were saying, right? Right. So, well... Let's put it this way. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's a cookie cutter thing right now that they have. You know, it's the typical uh, chemotherapy, mastectomy, and radiation. Mm -hmm. And doctors really are trained. They're not educated, right? They, they don't want to step outside the box anymore. Okay. And I learned that quite a bit. And the reason I learned that is because now I'm steroid free. Now, not everybody gets steroids, but someone like me does because I have an aggressive cancer, and mm -hmm. they don't know when they put the toxicity in your body, they don't know how you will be, meaning it's for resistance. Okay. Okay. So basically, I've been on weekly chemo every Friday mm -hmm. uh, for over a year and three months. Wow. wow. Yeah. And... Um, so being steroid-free, and you know, and you've got the fear of cancer, so if I don't answer your question, it's coming. It's, that's how my memory works now. Mm -hmm. um, but being steroid-free, you can, you can logically now ask questions to your doctor like I have. And I basically told her, listen, if you're not part of my team to save my life and give me advice, step outside that box, then I don't want to talk to you anymore. But because she basically told me I couldn't go off steroids. And my nurse told me the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then I asked her again another time after I started getting depressed and after someone called Child Protective Services on me and all kinds of other stuff um, because I started losing my memory, right? My mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. CPS, Adult Protective Services, the police, everybody's come. Oh, my gosh. And these are my friends. And so I'm, there's, I hold, I'm very open about this, Okay. Um, so they were, they were calling because you weren't able to remember, like, your, your, your daily you. life was affected by this? Um, those weren't the people. These were the people on Facebook <laughs> that called. Okay. The people that see something on Facebook, and, I, and they only see me at bits and pieces. Right. Oh, I know. See, yeah, okay. People don't pick up the, the phone anymore, right, to right. say, hey, how are you doing? Do you need help? Do you need support? Right. And, right. It, and Jackie, you see my wall. I, you know... Part of it in, in getting my memory back 
is I have to basically type as fast as I can as I used to type because mm-hmm. I'm in IT, and it helps my memory. Mm. And so images help. It's like the memory game we teach our kids, right? Right. Um, I do crossword puzzles again. It's because I'm training my memory. Well, people that don't watch my wall, that see something in the news feed, don't get the, the pieces, they immediately think I've gone crazy because they only see one spot. Right. And, it's and, kind of, and then they pass judgment. But, and what kind of, but what kind of thing are they seeing that they're actually not only judging but calling, you know, authorities? Oh, like I did Where's Waldo stuff. And I, I would say, hey, I, I'm playing this game. My, my psychologist said this is good. It, you know, it's like going back to Scooby-Doo. You know, these things help me. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying. And I put, I put in there, I'd say, I'm playing this game. My psychologist is here. I have to be in the game in order to get my memory back. And, you know, but it's at some point, Marie, do you, uh-huh. do you think that it's, it's, I mean, we've talked about this a lot with our guests that are, uh-huh. have a public image and mm-hmm. you know, what, at what sacrifice to you, are you willing to continue to go to, you know, put your life out there and then have these people that don't know you and pass judgment. And really being that I, I, I work in that field, I know how disruptive it is to have child protective services and adult protective services come into your life. At, at what point do you just say, you know what, it's not necessary for me to you know, put everything on the internet because now I'm being subjected to this harassment. Right. Well, you know, I I put this out there a long time ago. My digital footprint is strong. I, I, you know, my message is always about hope. I don't post negative stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Very rarely would I post something negative and and usually I'm just positive. I mean, you know, I, how do I put it? I am who I am and I've never changed. I mean, I've grown Mm -hmm. obviously through cancer, but I've never been a bad person. If you look at everything, it's always positive. Right. So um, I, I don't have anything to hide. Right, right. And I think the, the work that you're doing uh-huh. and, and opening people up to conversation and to also understanding you uh-huh. a little bit is, is outweighs, you know, the few people who think they know you based on a few posts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? And absolutely. so, I mean, we all have struggles that people have no idea about. And sometimes... You know, we just put the funny and the, and the mm-hmm. you know, rosy out there. Right. And, and so to be able to, even though, the you know, the medium is electronic and right. not face-to-face, and right. I think that we definitely struggle with um, not s- connecting with each other in person enough. Right, right. Um, exactly. But you also are opening up, like you have no idea your reach. Sure, it's this many people and this many likes or whatever, but right. all the people who are reading who aren't necessarily... Um, contributing or liking or, you know, you could be changing somebody's life that you have no idea. Right. And, and to answer Kim uh, directly, you know, you said about Facebook, here, here's, here's where I'm at. Do you think I'm ever going to post something about CPS coming to my house and all that stuff? No. I want people to listen to your show. I want people to get the message. I'm not about, like, trashing anybody. Um, so this is something that I want them to hear from me mm-hmm. versus see it in type. Facebook. Right, right, yeah. right. So Marie, we only have a minute left. Okay. So tell us, how, how does one become their own advocate? I mean, did you go into this being your own? I mean, what would be your tips, your number one tip? Attitude is key to fighting cancer. Remember, cancer is a science. And I would recommend going holistic, a mix of that plus chemo. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was told I would never be off chemo for the rest of my life. Um, and I would Google cottage cheese, flaxseed oil, and cancer, and Bill Henderson, cancer. Mm-hmm. He has uh, really opened my eyes up to what's going on with cancer. And um, also you can Google Joanna Budwick with the Budwick diet. That's B-U-D-W-I-G, mm-hmm. diet, D-I-E-T. And that's what's working for me. Um, and, and thank you, Marie, for sharing that. Um, mm-hmm. in, in closing, because we are going to go to break, um, I watched the video that you posted um, with Stephen Dimmick, Dimmick, right? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I have to tell you, I was. Uh, it's on. It's on your page. I think you post on the Broadcast page, so listeners should go check that out. It was really beautiful and empowering to watch you take mm-hmm. ownership of the day that you decided to shave mm-hmm. your head. And I just have to tell you, um, I sat in my, my kitchen and I cried, and my son was asking me, like, why was I crying? Because I'm, I'm always weeping about something. Um, <laughs> but it was really beautiful, and I really mm-hmm. – um, I, I, I can't imagine what that must have been like for you, but I love that you were able to let us in and show the vulnerable side, and um, that was a, just a beautiful moment. And so thank, thank you for – Thank you. I appreciate that. It was – it was – it was um... – you got to take things by the horns, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, you know, uh, I was in a tailspin for a bit, 
I think because of steroids, you know, and the chemo and all, all the kind of emotional upheaval you go through. But I feel, I feel well, right. you know, and um, I, I say this, the only person that can save yourself from any illness or ailment or drug addiction, what have you, is yourself. So unless you step outside that box, mm-hmm. no one can help you, your brother, your sister, no one. Well, you, um, you are helping so many, so many people, so. and we really appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming thank on you, the Marie. show. Thank you, and anytime you want me to come on, I'm always there. Absolutely. Great. Have a great All day, right. Marie. Thanks. And we'll be right back with Shelly Ross. Today's broadcast is sponsored in part by Gerard Cosmetics, a cosmetics line created for women by women who empower each other and strive to offer products that are luxurious, accessible, and endlessly chic. For a limited time, get an exclusive 30% off site-wide. Visit GerardCosmetics.com slash shop and enter promo code broadcast and follow at Gerard Cosmetics on Twitter. And Whitening Lightning, a staple for Hollywood celebs and top YouTube influencers, Whitening Lightning's famous Dial-A-Smile kit is recognized all around the world as the best way to whiten your teeth in just 20 minutes. For an exclusive 30% off site-wide, go to WhiteningLightning.com slash shop and enter promo code BROADSCAST. Gerard Cosmetics and Whitening Lightning, easy, quick ways to boost your beauty and confidence. You're listening to BROADSCAST with Kim Goldman and Sweet Little Jackie. Welcome back oh, I to BROADSCAST. Oh, I never know when to come in on that. Right? I never know where we are. Right after Andrew says, sweet little Jackie. That's when you come in. <laughs> well, that's another show for itself. Um, <laughs> well, so we're yeah. talking advocacy in yeah. um, the healthcare field because I think people are so overwhelmed when they're either diagnosed with a uh, disease or even just staying well. Yeah. So I love that we talk to broads who've really kind of grabbed the bull by the horns. And and I'm, I'm learning something too. Uh, I don't take very good care of myself. Um, and I'm learning to be a better advocate for myself. So it is helpful. So, um, today we've got, um, a friend of mine, Shelly Ross is joining us. I, um, I don't know if Shelly will remember this, but my very first moment of meeting her was in 1994 when Mm -hmm. my brother was killed and we did our very first television interview with Barbara Walters and Shelly was the producer at the time. And I remember we met at the Peninsula Hotel and Shelly walked out with Barbara who was so regal and not that Shelly wasn't. Um, but I just remember uh, we uh, a beautiful friendship was born that day. So I'm thrilled that all these years later, Shelly is able to join us today and share her story. So welcome, Shelly Ross from Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Hi, Shelly. Thank you. Hi, Shelly. Thanks I for joining I remember me the day I met you, too. Yeah. Oh. It changed both of our lives. Yeah. Did, did you did. run toward each other in slow motion? <laughs> no. <laughs> that happened later, I think, when we, when we bumped into each other at jury duty. Do you remember that? That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Times. I was covering the Menendez trial and got oh, called for jury duty. Yeah, oh. nuts, nuts. Wow. Um, so we'll back up a little bit. So Shelly, as I mentioned, uh, used to work with Barbara Walters way back in the day. But um, Shelly, you're a former executive producer, Emmy Award winning producer, I think. Yeah, I Good should Morning mention. America. Yeah, Good Morning America. And, and I think it was 2020 at the time or primetime. I think you were all over uh, ABC. Both <laughs> primetime and, uh, well, primetime live. Right. And uh, CBS early show, the early show. Right. Wow. Forget that. My goodness. So and lots of things. And so I remember a couple years back, um, you posted a beautiful, uh, Facebook post about, um, you undergoing a double mastectomy. And I, mm-hmm. I remember I was in my bed and I was reading it and I was moved to tears. Um, I had no idea that you were in such a personal struggle. And so without, bearing the lead any more than I probably already did. Um, will you tell us a little bit about, about your personal experience with cancer? Well, the personal experience um, was interesting in context of advocacy because I had a lot of cancer in my family. And talking about taking uh, good care, I, I made a personal choice just to check and you know, keep on top of things and have annual mammograms. And I did everything by the book. And uh, three years ago this month, I felt a lump. And I went and I checked it out. And I got high fives from all my doctors for finding such a tiny lump. It was such early detection. Wow. And, but never, never, never find a lump or get sick in August. Because all the doctors 
that you want to meet with are are going to be out of town on vacation. Oh my gosh! Including oh. my family doctor, who oh. happens to have a degree in oncology. Oh, he so was it- away. But I decided I had a couple friends that I had gone through a uh, breast cancer process with that in a supportive role, and these two close friends happened to have gone to the same surgeon who was also out of town. Right. I made an appointment, and I thought, you know, before I go get my first opinion, I'm going to go at least research and get my second, third, and fourth opinions. Huh. So, so Shelly, at, at that point, yeah. they and, and they weren't like, hey, you have this cancer in your family. We should test you for the BRCA gene. Oh, well, that's the key. I asked every doctor I went to, uh, the first thing they do is you have to fill out your family history. Mm-hmm. And they told me I didn't. I said, you know, I really should be tested. They said, you don't fit the profile. Oh, the mother who died of lung cancer a grandmother who had throat cancer and lymphoma 16 years later. My, mother's, uh, my mother died at age 46. Her younger sister had breast cancer at age 40 and died at age 45. How does that not qualify her, for a family history her, that would show? I mean, just so, just so you're aware, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a BRCA1 sister. I also have the, gene, you know, the genetic mutation. So and okay. my, my mother died of yeah. breast cancer at 39 and, you know, it was a no brainer, but there are some doctors that you really have to say, you know, you have to educate them. I mean, Marie was just saying I this, they're trained, the but not educated. Why didn't you fit well, the profile though? Because, but you're also Ashkenazi was, Jewish, aren't you? Yes. And one in 40. But I fit <laughs> the profile today. Mm-hmm. Three years ago, I did not fit the profile. I even had a distant male relative, my mother's first cousin, had uh, breast cancer. Which is very rare. And now, if you, today, if you have one male relative, you are a candidate for a BRCA test. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And at the time, they wouldn't recommend it, the test, because it's a $4,000 test. It was. The price, I hope, hopefully, has come down because the Supreme Court Right. Uh, said that there was a monopoly on the test. Right. Myriad was the only one who could do it. Mm -hmm. And so insurance wouldn't pay for it. But in this two-week process, every time I got to, like, my mother's sister's, what would have been her first grandchild, had leukemia at age five, they would say, you're so far off the tree. Mm -hmm. You're so far off the tree. And... I did not have a first-degree relative with breast cancer. Now that profile has changed. Right. But when, by the time my family doctor got back from vacation, where a dozen doctors waved me off the BRCA test, he sat, we sat down and we spoke for over an hour, and he said, I'm going to submit a BRCA, take a BRCA test because I suspect that your mother died of lung cancer before she got breast cancer. Right. Had she lived longer, I suspect, and I'm going to tell the insurance company, I suspect she would have gotten breast cancer. Right. right. So, and lo and behold, I tested BRCA positive. Wow. Right. Well, Shelly, we're going to go to break, but um, stick around, and we will be back with you in just a minute. Okay. Thank you much. Thank you much. <laughs> <laughs> Why should you become a broadcast sponsor? Broad multimedia exposure, including radio, web, iTunes, YouTube, and social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A quick, easy way to reach your target demo, women. Exclusive, limited time only, affordable introductory rates. Plus 20 years experience in on-air and online marketing. We produce your one-of-a-kind creative in-house, saving you time and money. For more on becoming a broadcast sponsor, visit broadcast.com today. Listen to Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. The most riveting hour of anything you've ever heard. <laughs> Welcome back to Broadcast. We're talking to Shelly Ross about being your own uh, health advocate. Right. Shelly, I mean, all these years at Good Morning America and ABC News and CBS, and um, you didn't want to talk about cancer, and yet now you're president of 
the Cure Alliance. How do you go from kind of wanting to bury it and not let people know, you know, for career purposes, to having such an important role? Well, I I didn't uh, really want to bury it. I just didn't know how to tell people. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about it. I had my uh, double mastectomy four weeks before Angelina Jolie wrote her her groundbreaking editorial. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I finally thought, this is an opportunity. I will just, you know, uh, I'm now the sisterhood of St. Angelina. Right. And I, so I wrote how important the BRCA test is. I want to just make one quick comment about the BRCA test. Yeah. That women shouldn't be afraid. It doesn't mean if you test positive that you have to run out and have a double mastectomy. I made the choice because I already had had cancer. Right. So uh, you have a higher risk, but the risk is low. When you, in your 20s, your risk is very low. It, it uh, multiplies with every decade. So you, you wind up, you know, over age 50, past your child rearing years, you wind up having, you know, as high as an 87% chance. Right. Of getting cancer. I had my Hopefully. surgery, Shelly, when I, you know, before I had cancer, I wasn't sure actually when I, when I went under, um, if I did or not, because they couldn't do a needle biopsy or whatever. But I have a niece who recently reached out to me and she's also positive, but she's um, like about 24 years old. And so I told her to live your life, think about your health, you know, be a, an advocate, but exactly what you just said, not run out and have, have surgery. Right. She doesn't have to worry. And hopefully we will have better cures and better prevention. There is a doctor right now in Cleveland um, working on a breast cancer vaccine. And that's where we have to put the research money. Now, when you talk about, so I didn't really hide it. I just, uh, you know, I didn't uh, know how to reveal it. And you're not going to call everybody, you right. know, uh, you're going to go through it. And I had an, as soon as I found an opportunity, so it wasn't, you know, uh, I had gone through six months of chemo and I posted on Facebook. Mm-hmm. But the, the slogan that I developed, I had been working with the Cure Alliance just uh, as a uh, volunteer consultant because I was friendly with the founder of the Cure Alliance, Dr. Camillo Ricordi, who runs the Diabetes Research Institute in Miami. And I had been helping him construct a message for the media. And the slogan that I actually developed was, isn't it time to cure your disease and everyone else's? And that was inspired by, as we know, the anchors of the morning shows, um, advocate for the diseases that have touched their own lives. Right, right. And I, even though cancer had devastated my own family, uh, I always felt that we have to cover every disease. And then at the root, what we really have to do is figure out why we no longer cure diseases in the 21st century. Hmm. We have, you know, other, I I would say hep C is coming close. We have seen that when we throw a lot of money through the NIH at a disease like AIDS and Ebola and diseases that are contagious, that scare the daylights out of government officials, and they throw money at a disease, Mm -hmm. we wrangle it. Right. HIV is now treated, it's no longer has to be deadly. It's now treated as a chronic uh, illness, much like diabetes. Right. So what is... live a long life. So the Cure Alliance is a nonprofit organization of a few hundred elite brainiac doctors who are all (laughs) working on cures for different diseases in 20 different countries, they are, these are not the Laetro clinics in Mexico. They are the top research researchers around the world with incredible 
uh, academic credentials and awards and peer review papers and working on pancreatic cancer cures, diabetes, breast cancer prevention. And they believe in knowledge sharing, which is at the heart of it. We're now learning that most of these diseases are immune system based. Right. Jimmy Carter might have his cancer uh, at least arrested right. through immunology and tremendous breakthroughs happening. But we have to have a place to share the knowledge, open source research. And there is a bill that just passed in the House and will be coming up in the uh, Senate version, the 21st Century Cures Act which will actually give $10 billion extra to the NIH. Mm-hmm. And we're moving towards that goal. Uh, the, the 21st Century Cures Act has the same goal as the Cure Alliance. Wow. So we're banging that drum very loudly. How can people support that mission? Go online, donate. Uh, we have an online um, activist uh, way that you can contact through our website, www.thecurealliance.org. Mm-hmm. You can press a button, click on, and find out who your uh, representatives are in Congress, and you can send that, you know, direct them, say, support the 21st Century Cures Act. Fantastic. And uh, you can you know, log on and, uh, it's, uh, and donate. Well, Shelley, I I certainly appreciate you taking time out um, of your schedule and and sharing with us your story and the advocacy element. You know that that speaks to my heart. So I really appreciate that. Um, Go back to spending some time with David, your hubby, and the piano guys out there. And thank you. um, Thank you so much. Say hello. And uh, you could be. I I want you on my jury any day. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And I want you in my corner all the time. So thank you, Shelley. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Shelley. Thank you. We will be right back with Broadcast. When Broadcast was looking to relaunch our website, we knew exactly who to call, the team at Stark Social Media. At Stark Social, they understand the importance of a strong online presence. From marketing and branding, web design, and social media, the in-house team listens to their clients' needs and budget and responds with a tailor-made plan for your small business, nonprofit, or startup. Stark Social's philosophy is simple, do good work, and they live by that philosophy every day. Stand out from the competition and contact Stark Social Media today at starksocial.com. You're listening to Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal, the most riveting hour of radio ever. Welcome back to Broadcast. Um, So I just have to say during the break, the things that we talk about, and (laughs) Kim was talking about um, how she went to Kenny G's house for a party and uh, (laughs) couldn't flush his toilet. So (laughs) seriously, we need to periscope the heck out of these commercial breaks. Um, cause serious, there, there are so many things. I was afraid to get flushed into the toilet system yeah. with too many knobs yeah. and buttons. I think his music yeah. should be flushed. Wow. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, we only have a minute left next week. Millionaire matchmaker herself. Yeah. Patty Stanger will be joining us in studio. She's in coming studio. in studio. Yeah. So if you are single and want to mingle or you're potentially going to be single or, or- potentially a millionaire. <laughs> You need to uh, let us know your questions and, uh, you know, we'll get you on the air with Patty. Yeah. And um, also join us on Facebook at our broadcast uh, page and then also on Twitter. Twitter, broadcast show. Um, yeah. Let us know Instagram, what you want us to talk to her about. We got to get on that Instagram. Guys, it's only, it's two of us. You know what I mean? There's only so much we can get done <laughs> uh, in a day, but we, you know, we want to hear from you on all the social media channels. What do you want to know about dating, uh, internet dating? How to become a millionaire? I'm just kidding. No, just kidding. <laughs> All of those things. How to how to meet the right person. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank our guest today again, Mary uh, Walker Riddle. Mary Walker Riddle. Sorry. And Mary, Shelley Ross. And Shelley Ross for being so open and honest with their stories and helping us learn a little bit more about ourselves and how to advocate for our own well-being. Yes. Bravo, and, ladies. Yeah. Take good care of each other. That's how it helps. Absolutely. I also think so. Well, have a great week. Thank you for listening to our 50th show.